Hello and welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Kilian from AWS and I'm joined by Kai from Carano. Hi Kilian, thanks for having me. All right, thanks for joining us. So what does Carano do? Carano is a Berlin-based company um, with 25 years of experience in fleet management. Okay, fleet management like, for instance, car sharing? Exactly. Great. Um, today our customers manage around 200,000 vehicles oh. using our applications. Okay, so lots of cars. That's so lots of cars, yeah. And um, most of our applications currently run on-premises. Our new product, though, Carano Cloud, is our first venture into cloud-native software development. So being a successful provider of software for on-premise usage, so what brought you actually to the cloud? What we've seen in the last couple of months and years is that the market is getting more and more competitive. So we had to find a way to listen closely to our customers and ship new features frequently and regularly. So the time to market was a real driver for us. Okay, time to market. Enough business, show me your board. <laughs> With pleasure. So, what you can see here is our microservice-based architecture. It starts with our web application, which is hosted on S3, which the user sees, and um, the API gateway, which handles all the requests. Behind the API gateway are our services, where we have currently two types. Um, on the one hand, it is um, Kotlin-based services with the Vertex toolkit. These services run inside Docker containers on ECS, and on the other hand, we have um, Lambda functions that are written in TypeScript and the serverless framework. Great, did, you, did that solve any issues that you had with your previous um, architecture? Um, partly, um, it's one part of the, of the solution. What we, what we um, wanted was to gain more flexibility when okay. it comes to choosing technologies and not being locked in in just a single language or framework. Mm -hmm. And um, this is what the API gateway does. It decouples the clients from the services so that the clients don't have to care about which service they are talking to or what the service is written in. So it makes you more flexible um, designing your microservice architecture? Of course. We now can choose um, a technology specific for a, problem, um, for a certain problem or requirement, mm. and we don't have to choose it based on the technology we are already using. Okay, great. So the API gateway isolates you from, from your clients and from your customers? Yes. Okay, I see JMS here, so it's probably something like Apache MQ, some other Java implementation? It actually was an uh, active MQ, uh, which we started with, but um, it induced some problems. Mm -hmm. JMS is JVM based only, so it conflicts with our requirement to stay flexible. And um, we had to manage the broker ourselves. So we had to spin up an EC2 instance and install the broker, provision um, uh, all the infrastructure, and um, it was quite hard. And when we started scaling ECS instances, we had problems with the item potency of messages. Okay, yeah. This so it's, uh, JMS is quite heavy then for this use case. Yeah. And also difficult to configure. Mm -hmm. We could have solved the problem with, with a broker, but the configuration would have gotten very complex. Yeah, okay. So we wanted to try something else. So what did you do? We came up with a solution based on SQS and SNS. Okay, so how do, do those work together? Um, what we do now is we send messages to SNS topics to fan out the messages, mm -hmm. and um, the subscribers of these topics aren't actually other services, but SQS queues. Mm -hmm. So the message flow is like this, and this step is our fan in to specific types of services, because all instances of a certain service type actually pull the same queue. So only the first instance that receives the message will actually process it. Okay. So this way we can ensure that messages are only processed once per service type, but we can still deliver the messages to various different types of services. Mm -hmm. So this allows you also to send messages easily to Lambda, I would say, like... It easy. does, it does. Mm -hmm. And um, when we, before we switched our messaging to SNS and SQS, we only had a few Lambda functions. Mm -hmm. Um, they were directly hooked to the API gateway or triggered by a, a CloudWatch event. But since we can use SQS or SNS as Lambda triggers, we wrote more. 
So it actually, an, it enabled your developers to go for Lambda even easier and more often totally. than before. Totally. So this is really a huge step towards a native uh, microservice application and towards cloud native applications. It is. Thanks for sharing, Kai. Thank you. And thanks for watching This is My Architecture.